Hello everyone. In today's video, I wanted to look at a situation that comes up from time to time from our roadway design customers. It's a situation like we see on the screen where we have a side slope design where our first segment coming from the lane or the shoulder has a known slope and width and the last segment has a known slope and height. In the middle, we have a known slope, but in that segment, we have a variable width. In other words, we would like it to flex based on the height of fill. Let's see how we can handle this in Subassembly Composer. To start with, just like always, we're gonna drop a point. And before I forget, I'm gonna jump over to our target parameters and create a surface target parameter, call it EG. Since we're targeting a surface, I'm not gonna set this up properly. I'm not gonna set up all of my codes and input parameters properly. We've done that in previous videos, so I'm just going to continue here with the geometry and the layout of this subassembly. So the first is uh, or the first point from the endpoint or the origin is known, and that is a slope and width. So let's go slope and de delta x, and remember that was a minus three to one, and it was ten feet. And we're going to add length to point. Fit to screen. And I'll go ahead and move my surface down. So now we're at the end of this first red segment here. And where we'd like to go is to the touchdown point. We can't go two to one here because we don't know the width. So we're going to reverse the order because geometrically, even in reverse order, this will end up at the same spot. So I'm gonna place the one to one for six foot first. And then I'm gonna go two to one slope to surface. That'll grab the touchdown point place a point, then I'm going to backtrack and place a point, and then build links for these last two segments. So let's do that. So next I'm going to our auxiliary point, place an auxiliary point. Remember this is kind of a phantom point, a point we're not going to construct. I'm going to turn off add link to point at the bottom. And we've done this quite a bit in uh, some of my last videos, and this is a very handy tool when you want to go find an intersection or check for an intersection, but not actually place a point there. So we're gonna do slope and delta Y. That's what we know from that last segment. And remember that is a one-to-one -one for six foot of height. So we're gonna do a minus one-to-one. -one. That'll be a minus six height. And I'll move my surface down a bit more. So you can see the AP1 placed, just a phantom point. And now we're ready to go and intercept with our slope out of order, the two to one slope. But since this is our point of touchdown, we're actually gonna use a regular point. So I'm gonna drag a regular point in and we're gonna do slope to surface. That in between segment, the slope was a minus two to one. Surface target is has an updated. Remember this, we'll click off. Make sure I tab through that. Then we'll come back. And there's EG. We'll fit the screen. Let's move this down. Grab my EG. And now if I move it down far enough, you can see. T3 forming there. So we placed a point, so we went down at our steeper one-to-one, -one, and then we went two-to-one slope to surface and found that point. Now we're gonna backtrack and we're gonna come back that known one-to-one -one for six foot of height to place a real point here. So let's drag a regular point in, and we're going to do a slope and delta Y. There we go, going from P3. Notice the slope, uh, we need to change this to 100. Remember that last slope was one to one. I'll fit this to screen. So you can see the direction is uh, incorrect. Notice we have this reverse slope direction option. So there we go. And remember the delta Y on that last point was six. So we go back at one to one for six foot of height. So we've locked this segment in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna turn off the plate or add link to point. This is not a must, you could go ahead and place it here. I just like to place the links in order of creation. 
So now that I've have three real points here computing that, I'm just going to drag a link in and I'm going to start uh, connecting point P2 to P4. And then I'll drag one more link in to connect P4 to P3. Fit the screen. So again, we came here, we went down to fake point, found a real point, backtrack real point, links to connect both. So let's test it. So we'll call this solver or solve two. And I'm going to save this name as solve two on the desktop. We'll close it. Let's go over to my example file here. So I have already have a assembly here built with two lanes and I have that shown in cross section. If you see the green line here, that is the existing ground surface line. So let's go to my tool tool palette here, right click import. I'm going to pick uh, solve two. Add that right click refresh image. Now we're ready to left click place in the file. And escape. I'll move this side so you can see it. So now we need to update the corridor with the target parameters. Go to uh, corridor properties and we'll go to parameters, set all targets. There's my surface existing ground. Rebuild the corridor. We have a few errors, but that's expected. So you can see here, it looks like it's working well. We found the intersection. So let me go down and grab this section line or sample line and uh, move it down a bit. So if you would watch the right side as we increase in fill. So you can see that middle segment, that middle two to one stretched out. We maintained our six foot height here. We maintained our 10 foot wide here. So I hope this quick video has been beneficial. Have a great day.